Hi, everybody. I just want to introduce Joanna Berger, who will be talking to the club about how to deal with an aggressive parrot. And everybody, please save your or put your questions in chat. And I'll turn it over to you now, Joanna. Okay, thank you so much. And thanks so much for having me. Um, so this is a big topic, parrot aggression. Um, and I only have an hour. Um, I do have commitments after this that I will be having to get to. So it is uh, just an hour talk today. Um, as I was preparing for it, I realized I could talk about parrot behavior endlessly. So um, I did have to be careful about what I could include in the talk today. Um, but I do um, private behavior consultations as well, where we are in depth um, with you and your individual birds. Um, so you will have that information um, from me and from Amy if you want to follow up after this talk. Um, so let me start. Okay, first of all, I just want to acknowledge that I am here in Virginia um, on the eastern side of Virginia, which is Patawomeck Powhatan land and was called Senecomaca in the original uh, Virginian Algonquin language. And um, Amy has already introduced me, but um, I do have my master's degree in applied animal behavior and animal welfare science. And I have been uh, providing parrot behavior consultations for the past five years through my own business. Um, I do work with some other animals as well. I do try to focus on parrots. Um, my dissertation was on parrot behavior and I have really focused on parrots. Um, since I've become a behaviorist. Um, and even before that, I worked as a veterinary assistant at an exotics uh, practice. And that's where I really got my interest in birds. I had a psychology degree going into that um, work and then built on it as I got my behavior science degree. Um, but I do also work with other um, sort of non-traditional pets like rabbits and rats um, and I most recently worked with a ferret um, but I have worked with parrots of all different species um, from all around the world and um, really enjoy working with birds and talking about bird behavior. Um, this slide is a little bit uh, technical and academic but I wanted to begin with the definitions of aggression and aggressive behavior um, and agonistic behavior. So first of all, in behavior science, agonistic behavior is a term that encompasses aggression. Um, so you might hear scientists talking about agonistic behavior. Um, and the definition of that is a complex of aggression, threat, appeasement, and avoidance that often occurs during encounters between members of the same species when encountering um, a stranger arrival, many animals exhibit a mixture of aggression and fear, which manifests itself in various forms of agonistic behavior, including ambivalent behavior and conflict. Agonistic behavior is usually typical of the species, often taken in the form of characteristic displays. And um, then aggression, um, this, these definitions are coming from the Oxford Dictionary of Animal Behavior by David McFarland. Um, aggression had a really long definition in there, and this is just part of the definition. But the key points are that it involves uh, damage or threat of damage, actual attack or threat of attack. It also involves postures and displays that are typical of the species. Forms of aggressive behavior include facial expressions. Um, these have evolved through a process of ritualization into specialized forms of communication, meaningful only to the member of the same species. Aggression has evolved as a means of defending or obtaining resources such as food, territory, or mates. Aggression is a complex matter involving communication, bluff, assessment, and opportunism, as well as fighting ability. So aggression is a big topic, and it's more than just bites. Um, but I did think that with the audience today, it would be useful to kind of focus on uh, parrots biting people as I talk to you today. Um, but it is a bigger topic and, um, and I will talk more about how aggression also involves 
much less severe um, behaviors. So biting is a very severe form of aggression, um, but parrots will chase each other or even just displace each other, one walking into the territory of another um, and then the other one leaving or one walking towards a key resource like food or a favorite toy and the other parrot walking away um, is that's what's more commonly seen um, between birds of the same species when they're in a more naturalistic setting. Um, you're more likely to see that than the higher level aggression, which is biting. But I'm gonna talk a lot about biting today too. So parrots biting people. Biting should not be as common as it is. Um, it's too common in aviculture and uh, people who have pet parrots will kind of normalize it. And I can see why people do because it is it, it does happen a lot in captivity, but it really shouldn't be happening as much as it is happening. Um, because parrots very rarely bite each other in the wild. Um, and there's a really great article called Biting It's Not for the Birds that was written by Steve Martin, um, who's the president of Natural Encounters. He's a very senior bird trainer. Um, and it was published in Citizen Magazine, which is the World Parrot Trusts magazine. I'm gonna see if I can uh, put together, include this in like an email that Amy can send out to club members because I'd love for you to all have um, access to this article. But he interviewed a bunch of um, parrot field researchers and over, he said over a total of 35 years of field research, only two of the researchers had ever seen or heard of a parrot biting another parrot enough to make it bleed. And yet we're seeing um, you know, people who have pet parrots bleeding from parrot bites really frequently in their homes. Um, when I was in the aviary at Project Perry Sanctuary, there were about 50 African gray parrots living in the very large aviary. I was in there doing behavior observations for over 60 hours. And during that time, I was looking at territorial disputes over key resources. Um, so the birds were getting into conflict and I did not see them bite each other. Um, they resolved their conflict and communicated um, with much more subtle um, behaviors. And so they didn't have to resort to biting. There was another study by Elizabeth Hobson and her colleagues and uh, that looked at Quakers in an aviary. And in that study, the Quakers bit each other, but it was very rare. And most of the severity of aggression was relatively low. Observed injuries were rare. Um, so yeah, I was really surprised that when I was in the aviary, I really wasn't seeing biting happening. And it was really different than being in homes or in a exotics veterinary setting where bites were more likely to occur. So why are parrots biting? Parrots bite for a reason. Um, and sometimes to us as humans, it seems like they're biting for no reason, but that's because we're having trouble understanding what that reason is. Um, there's always some sort of reason for a bite um, because bites are a very intense and aggressive form of uh, communication for the bird, um, but there's always a reason. This uh, infographic was something that I think is really fun because I found it um, and it's actually about human behavior. It's from a, a teacher's website about education and um, it's talking about biting behavior in human children. Um, but I like it because it's this image of the iceberg model of behavior. So the biting is just one behavior that you're seeing, which is the tip of the iceberg. And underneath it, um, and this is also true for parrots, there is a lot of emotion. Um, they won't be the same things for parrots and children, but like this idea of the, the biting behavior being the tip of the iceberg that we're seeing. And then we need uh, to get, like take a deep look um, to find what emotion is going on and what is causing that um, aggressive behavior. Um, and, in both humans and parrots and other species of animals, 
there is um, what's called the stress response. So it, you may have heard it mentioned, um, fight or flight. Um, and with birds, they literally can fly to escape danger, um, but they can also fight. And biting would be a behavior that could be part of their fighting repertoire. Um, and so fighting or uh, flying are ways to escape danger when an animal is feeling stressed. And the um, stress response is a physical um, change in the body. And the image that I have is of like human anatomy, but similar thing, very similar things happen in birds. Uh, so in birds' bodies, there are hormones that will be um, acting in the body like adrenaline and um, corticosterone, which will um, go along with this cascade of physical changes. Um, heart rate will increase, respiratory rate will increase, all as part of this stress response. Um, and so I just wanted to explain that because there is something physical going on um, in your bird's body. And that can help you understand why they might be acting um, strange. Like this, the hormones will be having an effect on their brain um, and that will then result in, you know, can result in intense behavior, like the fight behavior. Here's an example of some biting behavior in the wild. Um, these are ring neck parakeets and um, this photo by Ganesh Shankar is really um, a phenomenal example of these birds defending their nest site from a predator. And um, this is a large lizard who eats baby birds and eggs. And you can see in the photo that one of the uh, parakeets is biting the lizard's tail and trying to defend this nest site. And that hollow area in the branch is a uh, parrot nest site. So they probably have eggs in there or they were planning to lay eggs in there, but probably there are some eggs in there that the lizard is trying to eat. And then the birds are trying to um, defend their home and the birds are, you know, probably very scared, um, but are fighting to protect their nest site. Um, so applied behavior analysis is an approach that I use and um, I took a professional course with Dr. Susan Friedman about behavior analysis and she's been a real um, leader in talking about using behavior analysis to understand why animals are behaving a certain way. Um, we can look at what happens right before a bite occurs and what happens right after the bite. And that can also help us understand um, like the reason for the bite, what in the environment is leading up to the bite and causing it. And then what in the environment is rewarding the biting behavior, uh, making it more likely to occur in the future or um, what other consequences happen after the biting that might make it less likely. Um, we can also look at what are called the distant antecedents. So things that happen before the behavior, like the bite, are antecedents. And distant antecedents are like the bird's background and history. So when I'm doing a behavior consultation with the client, I'll usually begin by asking a lot of background information about the bird. Um, you know, um, any inf I'll ask the client if they know about the bird's breeding history, like uh, the breeder, um, where was the bird acquired? Was this bird living in a pet store? Was this bird living at a breeder's house? Um, is this a rescue bird who's been rehomed in you know, multiple homes? Um, do we know any information about the bird's parents? That all is uh, the distant antecedents that can give me an idea of you know, whether this is a bird that has anxiety um, or has trauma in their past that could be involved with their current behavior. And then I will also ask, you know, can you remember the last time your bird bit you? And can you remember what happened right before and then how you reacted to it and what happened right after? Um, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later too. Um, and you can totally schedule a behavior consultation with me so that I can do this for you and your bird. Um, um, but 
it's something to keep in mind that you can try to do yourself as well, but I can, I have a lot of training in this, so I can provide that professional um, viewpoint. And it's sometimes nice to have somebody outside of the situation looking in and doing the analysis for you. Um, also, every bird is unique and every circumstance is unique. So, you know, this talk is just kind of an overview and I'm not going to get into, you know, every thing, every reason why a bird might be aggressive, but um, give you some, some ideas of what you can do. So one thing that I think is really great to do is to create a bite journal. So you can log and record um, what happened each time your bird bit you. And it's basically taking a methodical and scientific approach to reveal patterns um, that could explain uh, why the parrot is biting. And it's very important to record what happened right before the bite and then right, what happened right after the bite. But you can also write down the time of day, who was bitten, who else was in the room, um, maybe including like other people in your household, but also other pets and maybe other birds um, that were in the room at the time and any like noises, lights or objects in the environment that might've startled your bird. Um, and as you take these notes, um, you know, it can be a little bit of a chore to sit down and write your notes, um, but it can be really helpful once you have them written to go back and look back. Um, it's also something you could bring to a consultation with me and then I could look through them and find, help you uh, see the patterns. Um, it would give me a lot of information as well. But I did, you know, recently, for example, I had one client who um, their conure was biting them and they did this um, journal and they found, which I had suspected, but we weren't sure about, that it, the biting was happening every time they moved their conure away from their other conure. And so the, uh, the biting conure was sort of anxiously and closely bonded to their other bird and, um, and got really upset and really stressed whenever uh, she was moved away from the other conure. And that was kind of, but they didn't know that before. They thought she was just biting randomly because she was on their hand biting them, but it was, turned out she was biting their hand while they were moving her away from the other bird. Um, so they were really happy like to, about the journaling and thought it was really useful. Um, and then here are some ways to de decrease aggressive behavior or decrease biting um, and I'm going to go through each of these. So these are my top three ways to decrease aggressive behavior that I'll cover in this talk. Um, number one would be to learn your bird's body language. Number two is to use treats. And I'll explain more about that because um, there's specific ways to use them. And number three is to manage the environment. So number one, learning your bird's body language. Um, so this is how to learn your bird's behavior. And you learn your bird's behavior by watching your bird really, really, really closely. Really pay attention to what your bird is doing and um, watching like their postures and where their feathers are and the shape of their eyes, um, how their body's leaning and what they're doing can give you a lot of really useful information. And you can see in the photo, I'm holding a very large uh, Moluccan cockatoo and I'm doing a behavior consultation with this parrot in this home. Um, and it's not a bird that I um, have like a close relationship with because it's like an initial consultation. So um, the bird is on my arm, but, and I am smiling for the picture, but I'm staring very carefully at this bird. Um, you can look at my gaze is like very, um, carefully watching this bird to make sure that um, she is remaining calm and I'm not about to be injured. Um, and uh, so it, it's great whenever you have your bird stepped up on your body to really be able to watch your bird. Um, so 
that um, you're not going to get caught off guard while you're distracted doing something else is the time where birds can often bite. Um, and then if you're looking away doing something else while your bird's on your hand over here um, and your bird bites you, you don't really know what, what was going on for your bird. But if your bird's on your hand and you're watching them, um, then you can tell when your bird's uh, body language is starting to get show that they're getting stressed and then you can calm things down for them before you get injured. Um, another great thing to do is to not have your bird on you at all, but to sit quietly and just observe your bird without interacting with them and without interfering and just see what they're doing. And it, um, some people, people find this actually kind of challenging, um, like it's easier said than done because it can be um, a unique experience to just like sit and focus on watching your bird without doing anything else. Um, and it's something that I did during my dissertation research. I was, you know, recording and observing uh, African gray behavior for over 60 hours, trying not to move and trying not to interfere with them at all. And it was very um, educational because I learned a lot just from watching them. Um, and here are the aggressive behaviors that I saw during my study of African greys. So chasing um, was a low intensity agonistic behavior, which was walking towards another African grey and then displacing them. So one bird walks towards the other and the other one walks away. So the walking away was uh, what I called fleeing. I saw a really interesting one, um, which we don't really hear about happening in people's homes very much, um, but was really cool in the aviary setting uh, where a individual African gray would pick up a large stick that was on the ground with its beak and repeat, re, repeatedly and rapidly lower the head and body to strike the stick against the ground. And it appeared to be a display of strength. Um, there was head bobbing, which was repeatedly moving a head up and down. Neck fluffing, which is fluffing the feathers on the neck while the head was lowered, um, usually while approaching another individual during a uh, dispute. Um, and there's bowing. Uh, so neck fluffing lower, so that head is lowered, the neck is kind of stretched out, and then there's feathers on the back of the neck that are fluffed up or um, erect. And then there's bowing, which was um, the feathers on the body were fluffed out, um, kind of puffed out, and then the birds raised their both of their wings above their backs so their shoulders were close together, extended the tips of their wings, leaned forward toward the ground with their bodies, and usually rhythmically and in unison um, bowed their bodies along, usually with their mate while chasing off another bird. So you can see this in this video. And this video was actually before my study started. And this is the most like intense aggression that I saw um, the whole time I was doing my study. So this gets um, very intense, but there was no bleeding. Um, but you will see some fighting behavior between African greys. And I'll talk through as we watch it to explain what's going on. So you see that bird with a white head, he's bald on his head. He's walking towards another bird's territory and she is chasing him. She owns this territory, she's chasing him away. She has her, uh, yeah, and she actually flipped him on his back, which is high level aggression. She's got her feathers puffed out. Here comes her mate and he's joining her. They're both chasing the bald bird away together. Um, and watch for their, their heads are lowered and they do fluff up their feathers on their shoulders um, or on their wings. And then he's backing away, looking at, so bald bird is backing away, looking at them. Um, and now the, the mated pair is still chasing him, but they're just walking and he's walking away. And now he's going way out of his way to get to his own territory, which is behind theirs. Um, 
and so he had to take this long circuitous route he was kind of taking a shortcut before but that went through their zone and so they chased him and that is that for the video um this is from my youtube channel there are more videos like this on my youtube channel so you can check that out too um oops there we go some other potentially aggressive behaviors um include uh, the notes from this other study of Quaker parrots in an aviary, um, where the, the Quakers had ag aggressive displacements, bites, threats, and chases. So that's very similar to um, the grays in my aviary study, um, threats, chases, displacements, where one bird uh, displaces the other bird. Um, and they saw some bites. And these are some that I look for as a bird trainer. Um, eye pinning can be a sign of, or it is a sign of hyper arousal. So eye pinning is when the bird's pupil um, will dilate, get big, and then get really small and contract, and then um, dilate and contract really fast. Um, it's easy to see uh, with large macaws. Um, and it can happen if the bird is excited in like a fun way and they're having fun, but it is to do with excitement and um, it can often be hyper arousal because the bird is stressed and so it could predict more um, intense aggressive behavior if you don't give the bird space at that point. Um, so if I see a macaw whose eyes are rapidly pinning, I will take a few steps back, give them some space and let them calm down. Um, even if it might be because they're having fun, I still want to be cautious. Um, just in case it's because they're stressed. Uh, Pilo erection, which is feathers sticking up, especially on the head. You can see some of that in this photograph here. This Quaker is um, actually guarding these sticks, um, which he kind of wants to use as nesting material since Quakers are the, the parrots um, that build nests. Other parrot species just nest in hollows in trees um, that are pre-existing and they don't use nesting material, but um, Quakers will actually weave and build a nest out of twigs. Um, and uh, so you can see in the photo that he looks kind of fluffy. Um, I'm noticing his eye is slightly narrowed and there's these, the feathers on his head are very, very fluffy. Um, and that's some signs um, that he's a little bit stressed and aggressive. Um, an umbrella cockatoo crest sticks up very dramatically when the cockatoo is um, hyper aroused and um, like excited, but also um, is a big warning sign that the cockatoo could uh, be ready to bite you. So again, take a few steps away from the cockatoo or just let the cockatoo calm down um, just in case uh, because they will lift their crests up um, when they're saying that they need space basically because they're starting to get stressed. Um, and cockatiels can do uh, similar things with their crests. Um, and you do have to take context into consideration. So these things alone don't necessarily mean that your bird is um, being aggressive uh, for a lot of these. Um, there could be other explanations sometimes. Um, so like cockatiel crests will do different things at different times, not necessarily because they're mad, but sometimes when they're about to bite and they are very, up, they are very aggressive, um, they're, uh, crest will be erect and they can also like lunge forward with their mouth open and they can um, hiss at you. Um, and lunging with the beak open, especially uh, when the tongue is not sticking out of the beak and the bird's beak is just open and they're lunging their head towards you, that's like they're about to bite, so move away. Um, so number two, Way, so moving on from learning about bird body language, we're moving on to using treats as a way of treating um, the aggressive behavior. So we want to use something that the bird really likes and we want to use that carefully and a way that is well-timed um, to change things around for the bird. So one way to use treats is 
uh, desensitization and counter conditioning. And that is, uh, the acronym is DSCC. And that is a process that can be guided by a behaviorist like myself um, of taking something that scares a bird and carefully systematically associating it with something that the bird loves. So that the scary thing uh, becomes less and less scary as it is now associated with something wonderful. Um, we often will use food um, because that's delicious for the bird. The bird will be eating their favorite food and they'll then um, eventually learn that the thing that used to be scary is now associated with the yummy food and the positive emotions of like eating the food. So it becomes less scary. You don't, and you can also use toys um, as treats. It doesn't have to actually be a food treat, but food can work really well. Uh, luring is another technique where you can have the bird follow a treat so that you can move the bird around your home without having to handle your bird. Um, and one of my clients called it the chasing the millet game where they, um, you show them the food, the bird looks at it, reaches for it, and then you slowly pull the food away. The bird has to reach more and more, and then the bird will walk following the food. Um, and um, you can use that to get your bird out of a, a dangerous situation pretty easily. Just pull out the millet and see if you know they can just follow the millet out of the place where they're not supposed to be um, instead of having to resort to toweling them, which can be super stressful and scary and then make them more aggressive. Um, and then positive reinforcement training is a process um, that is teaching a bird to do a new behavior um, by rewarding them with usually with um, well with some type of treat could be food or a toy or something that they like and you're rewarding them for um, achieving steps toward a goal behavior um, and so you're teaching them new skills by rewarding them for doing things that you like you can also capture um, good behaviors that you like by um, like rewarding them throughout the day. So when your bird is not being aggressive and they're maybe resting or um, when they're chewing on a toy, um, that could be a good time to just drop a treat in their food dish um, or hand a treat to them if they'll take the treat from your hand. And um, that teaches them that what they're doing at that moment is associated with the yummy treat and they'll be more likely to do that in the future. Um, so it makes them more likely to chew on their toy instead of um, doing behaviors that you don't like, like the aggressive ones. Um, some notes about giving treats to birds who are prone to biting. Um, Watch your parrot's tongue as you hand the, them the treat. You can, this photo is a little bit blurry, but you can see that this cockatoo is sticking her tongue out and touching the object with her tongue. Um, so her mouth is open, her beak is open, but her tongue is sticking all the way out to get that food. Um, the tongue sticks out when they want to eat the treat. Um, when they want to bite you, um, they, typically will have their tongue pulled back into their mouth and it'll be leading with just the beak. The tongue is like back, um, not sticking out. So that's a little trick, something that I watch for when I'm training birds. Um, I'm actually giving her a little piece of paper uh, to play with because you can use that as a reward too. It doesn't just have to be food. Um, another hint is to use long treats so you can put space between your hand and your bird a lot of birds are scared of hands because a lot of birds have bad histories with hands um, grabbing them or poking them um, doing things that are, caused them stress um, and so putting some distance between your hand and your bird is a great idea um, some ideas for long treats are whole millet sprigs, you're holding one end and you're letting the bird eat a couple of seeds off the other end um, so that there's a few inches between your hand and the bird. Um, and then you can pull that sprig behind your back 
um, after they've had a couple of little seeds and then you can pull it out again so they can have a couple more seeds later on. Um, so I'm not saying give them a whole millet sprig to eat all at once. I'm just saying use it carefully as a long, um, <laughs> like a way to deliver your treats. Um, other long foods can be things like celery or asparagus or cucumber or carrots or zucchini, um, but anything long will work. So putting food on a spoon um, can work well as long as the bird is not scared of spoons. And putting food on a long uh, wooden skewer is also uh, something that can work really well. Um, you can drop treats into a dish, which works really well to teach your bird that it's okay for you to approach their cage. So you can just, as you walk by their cage in your daily life, um, dropping a treat into their, into their food dish every time you walk past will teach them that you walking near their cage is associated with something, um, you know, a delicious treat. Um, and then you can use all different types of reinforcers. Um, so this bird is enjoying a cork um, as another, you know, non-food option. Some more tips are that you can train your bird while your bird is inside the cage with the doors closed if you need to. That can be a way to keep yourself safe and you can start um, your training with the bird in the cage. Um, there's a lot of training that can be done through the cage and that can actually be a way to uh, start to build a relationship with your bird and to teach them useful skills um, and to build trust with them so that they trust you more through this history of positive reinforcement training. Um, and the training should always be fun for them. So it should be like this nice experience that you're having. And then you can use the skills you've taught to um, and that trust that you've built to then open the door and let the bird out. Um, but once the bird is coming out, they already have this like skill set that you've worked on. Um, however, there are some caveats. Um, birds tend to be territorial of their home zone, um, so they can get more aggressive near their cage. And so for um, many people and birds, it's easier to actually train them away from the cage and find a neutral training zone. So like a um, tabletop perch on a table in a different room away from the cage um, or you know a play stand that's in a different room a very or at least the opposite side of the room. So you're as far away from the cage as possible and that can help um, for birds who are cage aggressive mainly around their cage. Um, you can do training in that like more neutral zone. This bird did have some cage aggression and you can also maybe notice that the feathers on the top of his head are kind of um, erect or fluffing out um, on his neck and head and his eye is slightly narrowed um, and he's staring pretty intently. So he has some aggressive body language in that photo. Um, some other fun tips are that you can actually try wearing gloves to protect your hands. Um, and this person had a leather glove and a, um, a lovebird who was biting a lot. So it worked to do training um, with a gloved hand. Uh, and some birds will be afraid of gloves because gloves might be something new. So play it by ear. Not everything works for every bird and every person. Um, another pro tip is you can have a bird learn to step up onto a stick um, that has like a coconut shell um, attached to the end. So the coconut shell protects your hand um, and you can train the bird to stay at the end of that stick. Um, so we're on to number three. Uh, the third way to decrease aggressive behavior is to manage the environment and arrange the environment. So removing nest sites. Um, birds will get into a um, reproductive state when they, when the days become longer, so there's more light each day, and when there are um, areas that look like nest sites to the birds. Um, so most parrots nest in hollows in trees. So anything that looks like a hollow hole in a tree to your bird could trigger some of these um, reproductive behaviors. So um, if you can um, 
you can like try to reduce the uh, uh, the nest site um, situations in your home. So um, if there's a if your bird's getting really aggressive around a particular box, then maybe um, you know don't leave that box out all the time for your bird to be in. You can let them be with the box maybe for a short period of time, but um, not like not all the time if they're getting really aggressive around it. Um, evaluating lighting schedules. It's great to have full spectrum lighting for your birds. Uh, it is recommended, um, but you may want to like look at adjusting the timing of that light um, because like I said, they be, um, the day length as that increases that will trigger the reproductive hormones, which will then um, be related to territoriality around the nest site um, and like mating frustrations. Um, you can also manage the environment by blocking your bird's sight of things that scare them. If you have two birds who don't get along um, and have to be near each other um, because of the way that your home is, um, you could try to put a visual barrier between those two birds so they aren't like stressing each other out. Um, this picture is of a great idea to get a bird to take a bath in a way that didn't scare the bird. They actually got a uh, bird bath um, like you would for wild birds and put it in their bird room so that the bird could just choose to go there and have a bath um, when they wanted to because they were like afraid of the spray bottle and things like that. Um, and managing the environment also includes um, like, uh, making sure that you don't have birds fighting over one toy or fighting over their food. So you can spread food out um, to make more space uh, if you have multiple birds that are fighting each other. Um, be, and you can get multiple toys that are uh, the same or as similar as possible or a type of toy that you can spread um, because the larger the space is that the birds have to enjoy these um, resources, the less likely the birds will fight over them. Um, again, you can also do this with like a bathing dish. So instead of having a small little dish full of water that your birds are gonna both try to shove themselves into to take a bath, get a large dish, um, maybe a very large Tupperware container could work or like like a storage bin or um, a large, uh, I really like Pyrex um, casserole dishes as bird baths for you know, like a couple of small sized birds. Um, and yeah, so you wanna think about key resources that they might compete over if you're having inter-bird aggression. Um, and so um, we can put this all together with, um, and sort of an example of how I could address an issue that one of my clients, um, actually a few of my clients have had. So um, frequently when I'm doing consultations and talking to people um, and seeing what's going on with their birds, they, it turns out that their bird is biting them because they are picking their bird up and to move the bird away from the place where they don't want their bird to be, but it's the place where the bird wants to be. So, um, and they're actually like picking the bird up with their hand, like handling the bird to move them physically away from the spot. And so the bird is learning that you know, they go up to this spot that where they really want to be. Um, maybe it's a really nice perch um, on top of a curtain rod, or maybe it's um, someplace in the kitchen where they can chew on the cabinet and the cabinet wood feels really good to chew and it's really fun. Um, and then their human comes over and grabs them. Um, and so then they bite the hand and then the hand goes away. And so they get to keep chewing on the cabinet or keep enjoying their high perch on the curtain rod. And so they've learned that biting gets them what they want and stops the thing that they don't want, which is being grabbed and moved away from where they wanna be. Um, so we can fix this problem through 
providing enrichment, we could set up a play zone for the bird full of lots of things that the bird loves to manipulate. And um, we can give them a play stand with lots of great toys. Um, we could give them a little area of a desk that is reserved for them and has like some perching options and some a bunch of toys and some treats um, and hide the treats so the bird is foraging and looking for them. Um, and then the bird will be more likely to stay in that zone where we want them to be um, than to fly off to somewhere where we don't want them to be. Um, and then we can also do training using positive reinforcement. Um, we can teach the bird to stay. It's also called stationing. Um, so we could reward the bird for staying in that play zone or on that play stand. And um, we would teach them that it's great. They get a treat for staying there. And I do have a whole protocol for that, which works well, but uh, don't have time to go into the details. We could teach them targeting. Um, which I'm doing in this photo using a, uh, so I'm teaching this Timna to touch a coffee skewer with its beak. And then I have my pouch um, and that's full of little treats that was crushed nuts. So I give the Timna a tiny piece of nut once the Timna touches the, um, the target stick, which is the coffee um, stirrer with the beak. And then I can, build that into teaching the Timna to follow that coffee stirrer so that I can easily move the bird um, to different places in my home where I want them to be. And I can move them away from the places that I don't want them to be by having them chase that target. Um, we can also have them chase the treat itself and that's called luring. Um, and that can be like, yeah, another great hands-off way to move them around. Um, we could go and refresh some step up training um, and really make it clear to the bird by um, teaching them for about you know, 10 minutes a day, practicing having the holding a good treat and having your hand out and showing the bird that when they step onto your hand, they get the treat. So they get rewarded for stepping onto your hand. And then you practice that multiple times so that the bird is, so it's really clear to the bird that when you put your hand out and ask them to step up, that they're gonna earn something that they like. And then they get this really positive history with stepping up and lots of experience and practice. And then you can use it in other situations. Um, and instead of being angry that your hand is coming to move them away from where they wanna be, they'll remember like, oh, that hand means I get a good, good treat. So yes, I will step onto the hand. You can also teach them to come when called, which not enough people are doing. And I would love to help you teach your bird this. Um, and it is possible to teach your bird to uh, just come fly to you when you call them um, or when you like put your hand up in a certain way. Um, and then you would reward them for that. And we would do this in little baby steps. Um, so they would come to you from a super short distance, maybe a couple inches. And then we'd build up that distance so that they could come to you. Um, you know, some birds could even fly from a different room in the house when you call them. Um, and, but yeah, starting in baby steps and then systematically building these behaviors. Uh, and then finally, you can bird proof your home if you're you know, having to move your bird away from maybe uh, collectible items that they want to chew. You could, um, the easiest way might be to just take the collectible items and put them off in a different room that your bird doesn't have access to or in a cabinet or, you know, lock them up somehow um, so that you're um, not having that issue. And that's like a way to manage the environment. Um, and I'm getting very low on time, but um, I have had many uh, behavior cases that I've worked on with my clients addressing aggressive behaviors and biting. Um, a quick couple examples of those are one male cockatoo who um, we realized, yeah, well, he, was, he had a lot of anxiety and trauma in his past um, and didn't have a good, like he kept attacking his um, guardian and she had a, an appointment with me and 
And once she started doing some target training with him using, you know, treats that he liked, um, the way that I explained to her to do the training, um, it really turned their relationship around. The cockatiel started to trust her and stopped attacking her. Um, and there was another case with a green sheet conure. And again, it, um, it was biting, the bird was biting one person in the home and not the other. Um, this happens a lot where one bird sees one human as the, their mate and is very bonded with the one human, usually the one who's spending the most time with them and maybe petting them. Um, and so I explained to, you know, have one spouse decrease, like stop handling the bird so much and then have the other spouse who had been getting bitten do some one-on-one -on -one time training the bird um, or just basically hand feeding some treats to the bird. Um, and it was amazing how just that uh, really turned the relationship around because the conure then started to trust uh, the other spouse. Um, but the spouse who he'd been really bonded with had to like be in a different room while the other spouse was doing some one-on-one um, -on -one time with the bird and doing some hand feeding. Um, some other cases have been a lot more complex and uh, taken some more time, but um, I have gotten really great feedback from my clients. A lot of really wonderful testimonials coming through and um, uh, it's been really nice to hear all of that. Um, so if you want to schedule a appointment with me, uh, my email address is animalbehaviorconsultancy at gmail.com. Um, and then I am on Twitter. Um, you can always message me or even just tweet at me at Joanna Berger MSC. I'm on Instagram under that same handle, Joanna Berger MSC. And I am on Facebook, um, which is facebook.com slash the animal behavior consultancy. So those are ways to contact me. Um, email works just uh, it works very well, but um, you have options. And then um, like the first consultation is one hour long and it costs $135. Um, payments are made over PayPal um, ahead of the appointment. And that, that uh, fee encompasses uh, the behavior analysis, the written behavior. So I then spend another hour writing a behavior report with a, a detailed treatment plan, um, which gives you some training plans. And um, I also, during our session, will coach you uh, through um, training a useful behavior. So I'll identify, um, you know, ways to address the issue. And then I will um, coach you through doing that training so that you're uh, doing that yourself. And then I do also offer um, training sessions uh, that are shorter um, if we're just working on specific behaviors uh, to like if we're just working on specific new skills. But um, yeah, that's what I do. And it's over video chat. Um, so Zoom is an option or Skype or FaceTime, um, whatever platform you like. Um, and they tend to work really well and the birds um, tend to enjoy them too, which is always fun. So that's my talk. Okay, thank you so much, <laughs> Joanna. This is terrific. I know we have at least one person here who uh, has used uh, Joanna and had really yeah. positive results. And I, I also know some other people for the same thing here. And I, I know your time is short. I don't know mm -hmm. if you have time for any questions or if you you have to leave now. Um, um, I don't I'll, I'll also pa obviously pass that information, all the information you just gave us onto the club. Yeah, and I would love to put together a um, list of different resources that you could also like send out as an email to club members um, and I could include that, yeah. Okay, that would be that's cool. fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I probably don't have time for questions. Yeah, um, sorry okay. about that, but um, no but problem. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'll I'll give everyone your email and uh, perfect. Yeah, and they can maybe if they have any short questions, they can answer. Yeah. Or, um, I know it's a complex subject, and obviously, yeah. in an hour you can't cover uh, everybody's how to, how to stop their bird from biting, and that you do need to look at the specific situation mm -hmm. with each bird, but you mentioned a lot of really uh, good positive uh, 
techniques that will help for the individual yeah. bird. And as with most behavioral consultations, it really helps when a, an outside person can mm -hmm. take a look because we, we often don't realize what we're doing with our own birds. So mm -hmm. having having an expert who looks in from the outside can can really be helpful. Oops, got yeah. birds, birds running all over the place now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for coming. Um, I will make the recording available to everybody on YouTube afterwards, but we really appreciate your taking the time to talk with us. And uh, hopefully this will lead to some, some people being able to get the birds to be less aggressive. Cool. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, take care. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.